Um, there's a couple different options that are available to palliative care providers when they run into a patient who's experiencing the side effects from steroids. One is to rotate to a different agent. Uh, so for example, if you have someone who's developing steroid-related delirium, um, you can opt to rotate them to an agent that has less CNS penetration, such as prednisone. Another option is to do simply do a dose reduction. And so if someone's having a bad reaction at a certain milligram dosage, try a lower uh, dose. Just try to still get the benefit without getting the side effect. And then finally, the last option would be to stop altogether. It's usually stopping these medicines uh, at once doesn't have any long-term problems with it. They generally have a pretty long half-life and they remain in the body for a while. And usually you can see an effect within one to three days. And so if by five to seven days you haven't seen an effect, that would be a good time to think about stopping it altogether. Or if you start to see some side effects from stopping abruptly, you can slowly taper the medicine over the course of a couple weeks too. I'd say for me it's that we use these medications, this class of medications, steroids, so often in our patients um, and they can have such a powerful positive effect. I can't tell you the number of times I've walked into a symptom crisis and simply by starting them on this class of medicines, having dramatic results, whether it be pain management, whether it be nausea management, whether it be pain control. And in being able to teach people how to use them most effectively while minimizing that risk of side effects, I, I'm hopeful it will allow for um, our uh, attendees to be more confident users of what I think are a very important class of medications for, for comfort. We're always managing the risks and benefits of everything in palliative medicine, whether it's a surgery or medications, and these medications have a lot of benefit. They can be used very effectively and very quickly, but they also carry with it a lot of side effects. And so just being cognizant of what those side effects are, what to watch out for as you're using the medications, and how to educate families and patients about what to watch for is just really important because we use these medicines so often. Um, I can mention one. Uh, one is that, you know, broadly speaking, when we look at the use of steroids in our palliative care patients, probably dexamethasone is the steroid of choice for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it has the least impact on fluid balance. And so thinking about fluid retention and swelling and edema is the lowest risk of that. It has the best CNS penetration, which means that it has the highest likelihood of giving us some of our centrally mediated effects that we're looking for, which includes nausea management, boost in energy, uh, boost in appetite, um, and it costs pennies. Uh, yeah. So it's, uh, it's the medication that I want people to walk away with if I had to choose a steroid for most of my patients, it would be dexamethasone. And if I would also say that if you're using dexamethasone and you're experiencing some side effects from the central nervous system like insomnia or euphoria or even hypomania symptoms, that you, if the steroid is effective for the reason you're using it, you can rotate to another steroid that doesn't enter the CNS as well, such as prednisone or methylprednisone. And maybe the final point, or at least uh, another point that I'd like people to walk away from is that should I develop a serious illness and should someone in the audience be taking care of me, please give me dexamethasone. It, I haven't had it before, but it sounds wonderful. The, most of the patients I put on it tell me, I feel the best I've felt in such a long time. I've got more energy, my appetite is better, my pain and my nausea are improved, all with one tiny pill. So it's the kind of medicine that we can hit a lot of birds with that one stone. And you're usually starting it for one symptom like nausea or pain and they come back with you saying not only is that better but I also feel better. I can do a little bit more and even families notice that they're in better moods, they're, they're feeling better, they're just not quite themselves in a, in a very good way. Mm -hmm. So this was a question that came up amongst our team very commonly. We would see a patient that would have a symptom, and whether it's pain or shortness of breath or the fatigue or appetite, and we would say to ourselves, we would like to start a steroid, but does, does it make a difference one or the other? We preferred using dexamethasone because it's cheap and very well tolerated, but would it make sense to use prednisone? Would it make sense to use methylprednisone or some other steroid? And if not, in this case, when would it make sense to use some of those other medications? This was a topic that just kind of came up in our discussion with our pharmacist over and over and over mm -hmm. again. So we figured, you know what, let's just write a paper about it. I think it all comes down to that choosing the right drug for the right patient at the right time. And so just as you heard Tom say, 
Um, we really want to be making sure that we're selecting when we think a corticosteroid is the right answer for the symptom, are we choosing the best possible one to give them the best chance of positive effect and the lowest chance of adverse effect. And so I'm hopeful that they'll walk away with some real practical knowledge to make them more informed prescribers of these medications. And then just having a higher awareness of what those adverse effects are. Lots of studies uh, indicate that Physicians tend to underreport the adverse effects of corticosteroids, even though they can have an effect on patients' quality of life. And so, knowing what those adverse effects can be, and just being mindful of them, being on the lookout for them, because they can easily be addressed with a rotation or a taper or a decreased uh, dose. The data for corticosteroids, despite its very wide use uh, and, and very prevalent use in our palliative care patients, there's very little data to actually support the use of it in well-designed randomized control trials. There's lots of anecdotal data and case reports and so on and so forth, but there's not much data to really, really not much high quality data to really drive home the uh, benefits of corticosteroids. But despite that, everybody is very comfortable using them and uses them often. In general, I think doctors tend to underestimate side effects when you actually ask patients. We think the drugs are great. Um, sometimes their patients disagree with us. Well, so I would say that palliative care is a team sport, and whether it's going into family meetings with social workers or collaborating with your friendly neighborhood pharmacist, I would say the first step, at least for us when mm -hmm. we started this project, was to talk to one of our co-presenters who, who is a pharmacist, and having that member of your team or that go-to somebody for questions about this can be invaluable. There's also a great article by O'Neill Marks et al. Um, <laughs> that goes into some more depth uh, about this topic. I highly recommend it, the American Journal of Palliative Care.